Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Wednesday. Okay guys, so hopefully you caught our live recap today of The Valley with Kim from Bravo Breaking News. If you didn't catch it, we did it at 12. Um, it's so sad that it's over and there's no reunion. It just kills me. But it was such a good recap, so definitely go check it out. And if you guys haven't already on this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you're not subscribed over here to Up and Adam channel one or two, get subscribed, trust me. And um, yeah, we're about to talk about the Kyle Cook Craig drama and also apparently the Ultimate Girls Trip Brandy Caroline drama. There's a lot, lots to discuss. So here we go, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're going to start with the Kyle Cook drama because, well, how else do we start, right? So thank you to Reality Blurb. Kyle Cook revealed the text exchange with Craig Conover, the boyfriend of castmate Paige DeSorbo, after Craig's collaboration with a beverage company that competes with Loverboy. He also denied pushing his brand on Summer House castmates, and he shared more details about the drama. It was in a recent interview with Andy Cohen that Kyle shaded Craig for the collab, and he suggested that he was a liar. Afterward, a front person for the company, the competing brand, suggested that Kyle doesn't allow investors at Loverboy, and he hinted that before Craig's new partnership, the stars had a conversation in which Craig asked to invest in Loverboy, which Kyle denied. I'll be honest. Like Andy... It, it caught me off guard, is what he said on the Trading Secrets podcast, addressing Andy's questions about the drama. I hadn't thought about this in a while, and I let my emotions get the best of me. Andy sees that. He sees that I'm hurt. And what does he do? He digs deeper. But Kyle said that he consciously decided not to comment on Craig's involvement with the competitor, and he wanted to keep it a private matter until he made it public on Watch What Happens Live. That was not my intention. He also gave an update on Craig and Paige. I'm friends with Paige. I'm friends with Craig. I, you know, the last thing I'm trying to do is make it awkward for any of us. But Kyle then denied the claim that he doesn't allow investors. We've had investors since 2019. I value them immensely. I've had lots of them texting me saying, what in the heck is going on? And I could not have done it without them. He also said he gives equity in the company to all of his employees, consultants, and partners. So no, I'm not a sole owner. And he said... Craig never expressed interest in investing in Loverboy. But according to Kyle, Craig made a point of reaching out to him when he came into town in February. They had drinks, and before meeting with other friends, Craig sprung the news of his potential new partnership, and Kyle was given the impression that Craig offered equity. He was offered equity in the other company. The next day, I text Craig, and I'm like, hey, man, I've been given a lot of thought about what you said about this opportunity you have, and please like hold off from signing anything, you know? I'd love to put an offer on the table to kind of counter it. The irony is I'd actually talked to him a month prior to this because we're coming out with a THC soda. But after a back and forth, Craig essentially said it was too late. And that was that. He's a good friend of mine. You know, I just thought he'd at least give me an opportunity to like hear me out. And I just think that one of my good friends would, you know, like not go hop in bed with a competitor. Cal said that he feared this would impact our friendship. He also claimed that Ben, the founder of the competing company, DM'd Kyle for a potential meetup when he was already in talks with Craig. Kyle didn't see the message, but later Ben allegedly bumped into him at a conference and asked Kyle to go to dinner, which took place two weeks before Kyle's combo with Craig. Kyle claimed that he and Ben discussed throwing a party together to cross-pollinate their audiences, but Ben didn't tell him he was already discussing a collaboration with Craig. Ben also allegedly didn't tell Craig that he had just spoken with Kyle, who found this odd. However, Kyle said that he perhaps overreacted to Craig's involvement. Later in the podcast, he denied forcing anyone to consume Loverboy. I've never pushed this on anybody. Yeah, do I hope that they wouldn't bring my competitor's products into the house? Sure. He then addressed if Bravo is connected to his brand. No, they're not in cahoots. Technically speaking, they'll get a piece of my takeaway if there is some type of acquisition and I'm still on air. If anything... They tell me to tamper it down. They're like, Kyle, please take off the Loverboy shirt. I'm like, what do you mean? That's what I do. I wear my merch. My wife designed it. And they'll ask, hey, can you put those drinks in cups? If anything, they don't want it to look like an infomercial because they don't want people thinking we're in cahoots. So it's quite frankly the opposite. 
But Bravo would never be in cahoots with one big brand because it rules out the opportunity for others to advertise. That's why you'll never see one particular mass-produced alcohol over one show because alcohol is arguably one of the biggest buyers of ads on Bravo. Now, though Kyle stated that he never forces friends to consume Loverboy, he hopes that they'd choose to drink it on their own. I always want my friends drinking it because they want to reach for a lover boy, you know? There have been plenty of times this season where I wasn't even in the house. People arrived, they grab a lover boy. But according to Kyle, castmates must buy their own groceries and alcohol. I've given the house about $100,000 worth of booze over the years. That's for us, that's for our friends, that's for parties. Mm. But he clarified that if castmates film a restaurant scene, the show will have a $50 per head type thing because that's them asking us to go to dinner or whatever it might be. He denied that his wife, Amanda, provided funding to start the company. I think there was a miscommunication between Amanda and Paige. Paige kind of went on air saying that she not only paid the bills when I was starting this because I didn't have a source of income, but she also put her own cash for the initial pre-friends and family capital requirement to start the business. I've always had multiple sources of income. I personally, like I said, funded that first $100,000 while continuing to pay our bills, but I couldn't have done it without Amanda. She had such an impact. Her fingerprints are all over the initial branding and are still today. And Kyle then addressed the rumor that he and Hannah Burner fired from the show because he signed a deal with a competing brand that he had her fired. I know there's still people that think I got Hannah fired. It's actually quite the contrary. I told producers that I would film with her and I have zero input on casting, but he indeed helped with casting in season one. That's why I feel like so proud of this show. I put in hundreds of hours making season one happen because there was such a good chance that this was never going to happen, period. He said that he helped bring in each season one co-star except Stephen McGee. Mm. Okay. Well, we're not done. No, no. Now, thank you to page six. It looks like Camille Grammer explains why it would be a shame if Ultimate Girls Trip season with Brandy and Caroline did not air. Camille still wants the Ultimate Girls Trip season with Brandy and Caroline Manzo to see the light of day despite Peacock shoving it amid a sexual assault lawsuit. I think it should air, is what she said. I want everyone to see it. It was a great season. It would be a shame if it does not air. Now, Camille described the time that she, Brandy, Caroline, Vicky, Phaedra, Eva, Gretchen, and Alex spent in exotic Morocco in January of 2023 as heartfelt and fun, as the group apparently shared a lot of laughs. Was there drama? Of course, but it wasn't all about the drama. There's so much laughter and joking around and stuff like that, and the girls goofing off being women. However, while the housewives were being women, Caroline Manzo alleged the lawsuit in a lawsuit that Glanville had mounted Manzo on the couch, held Manzo down with her body, forcibly squeezed Manzo's cheeks together, and thrust her tongue down Manzo's mouth while humping her. Now, the New Jersey alum went on to allege and assigned affidavit that when Brandy was sexually assaulting her on the sofa, Brandy was rubbing her hoo-ha on Caroline. According to Caroline, Brandy then followed her into the bathroom, where Brandy allegedly threw her against the bathroom door, causing her to hit her head. And then she claimed that Brandy then locked her in the bathroom and forcibly fondled Caroline's lady parts against her will. Oof. In January, Caroline sued Bravo, uh, its Peacock streaming service, and others, claiming showrunners had seen that she was in distress and continued to film. She also accused producers of continuing to feed Brandy alcohol. Now the NBC Universal properties have declined to comment on the lawsuit and the unfiltered podcast hosts has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. Though Grammer wants viewers to see the highly anticipated installment of Ultimate Girls Trip, she understands that she does not know all the legality issues right now, telling us, I don't know, legally what can air and what cannot. Where this event happened, I wasn't in the restroom, I wasn't there, I didn't see what happened, but what I did see is stuff I've experienced before, so it's very hard, but I don't want to discount what allegedly happened in the bathroom. Mm. All right. I want to hear what you guys think. Guys, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And um, yeah, definitely let me know. Love you guys. See you in a little bit.